Welcome to the EOB Podcast, where we talk about the weekend box office and the new openings this week. I'm Ben No, and joining me is Sen Duong. Hey, Sen, you there? Uh, still here. Okay, so um, this past weekend, the live-action Jungle Book was released in theaters by Disney. I believe Warner Brothers is working on their own. Uh, I believe we'll see that sometime soon. And then the second Barbershop sequel. Uh, was also released, and uh, we'll see how those two movies did at the box office over the weekend. Uh, you left out Criminal. I believe a lot of people left out Criminal. Yeah, you're not the only one. <laughs> you along with the rest of America. Exactly, exactly. And uh, the rest of the world as well. We'll get to that. <laughs> how about we jump right in with the number one movie over the weekend. And as expected, it was The Jungle Book. Uh, the movie that was directed by John Farrell, featuring the voices of a lot of um, famous actors like Scarlett Johansson, uh, Idris Elba, um, Laputa Nyong'o, Vin Kinsley, Christopher Walken, Bill Murray, etc., etc. So you know Disney spare no expenses and probably has to call in a few favors for this movie. Right, that's why the budget's uh, 175 million, right? It is, it is, but which is cheap compared to the um, Batman vs. Superman movie, right? Yeah. The movie opened to, what, uh, 103 million over the weekend. Uh, I think you were saying that, hey, it could do 100 million. I said it would probably do around typical Disney live action movies without a huge star, which is yeah. around 70, but it did at the higher end of the spectrum, 100 million. So I was, was I saying 110 or was I saying just 100? I think you were saying 100. Okay, whoa, so I, I was pretty close. Yep. Yeah, I think most people were having it at your range, including HSX, which is, you know, tends to be pretty accurate. They have it around your range too. Uh, but I think, you know, it goes to show that one of these, one of the things with these big event blockbusters is when it's really well reviewed, like the Jungle Book, 94% on one Tomatoes, when it's really well reviewed, they tend to do even better than already high expectations. And, you know, that goes to show that, hey, you know, I, I think a lot of times with these studios, when one of their films are poorly reviewed, they, they'll say, hey, reviews don't matter. But they actually do, uh, as we can see from Batman vs. Superman, for instance. Even though it opened huge, compared to, like, say, The Avengers, which was really well reviewed, it didn't do as well. Uh, and with The Jungle Book, it, you know, again, most people in the industry, like you, were expecting an opening of somewhere in the 70 million range. But with such great reviews, it ended up shattering those expectations and opened at nearly 104 million. Yeah, I have to say that even if it did 70, it's still great and awesome yeah. opening. Right. But this one blew that estimates out of the water and it, did, it performed well above what people were thinking that it would do. The only other movie, the live action movie that did that was Alice in Wonderland with Johnny Depp and he was a big star back then. At the time, he was fresh from the Pirates of the Caribbean films and it's also Alice in Wonderland also followed that 3D craze fresh from Avatar. So it had all that built into it. Yeah, and, and then the Jungle Book just, uh, I mean, the follow-ups, right? Like Oz, The Great and Powerful, Malfeasant, Cinderella, all those live action movies did about 70 to nearly 80 million. This is just the Jungle Book. It, it's not anchored by any huge actors. Yeah, right. They found some unknown kid, relatively unknown kid, and made him the star. And then, well, the star in the movie, in the Jungle Book, is really the CGI, the technology, the animals yeah. coming to life, uh, voiced by famous actors. Right, 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 right. So apparently people weren't, uh, weren't uh, scared off by, you know, these... Remember last week you mentioned how the fact that there's live action, that it does look kind of scary and it might frighten off little kids. Uh, with the trailer, I had that feeling too. I'm like, whoa, these live action, because they look so real, can be scary. But I guess um, parents weren't scared off by it in, enough to not bring their kids along. Well, I guess their kids pester them and say, hey, you know, I want to watch The Jungle Book instead of I'm afraid of The Jungle Book. <laughs> yeah, right, right. So um, I read that this is a quote-unquote a four-quadrant film, meaning that it appealed to all demographic. So that's why it's so successful. It doesn't appeal just to the family audience. It doesn't just appeal to the kids. It doesn't just appeal to teens or, you know, right. middle-aged people. It appeals to all, all groups. Right, right, right. Uh, at 94% is one of the better review films of the year so far. And number two, um, Barbershop, the next cut, you know, the sequel to uh, the pre you know, previous Barbershop films. Um, 
which all opened at around 24 million range. But that was like uh, the last sequel was 12 years ago. Barbershop, the next cut, opened to uh, 20 million over the weekend. Which is, you know, solid, a solid opening. Yeah, it's about where you had it. I said it would do about 15 because so many years has passed. And you said it'll do about 20. So, yeah, you, you were right on the mark on that one. Yeah, and the reviews have been surprisingly good. 92% on, on one Tomatoes. I wasn't expecting anywhere near that range. Perhaps maybe that kind of pushed it to the 20 million range. Um, yeah, but you could say that Ice Cube's movies are solid performers. Yeah, yeah, that's true too. I saw it and it is uh, kind of ambitious. They do cover a lot of uh, topics that relate to not just African Americans, but some of the current topics in politics, like Barack Obama. Some African Americans feel like he didn't do much for them, and some African. And then there's another segment that, hey, he's president of the United States, not the president of, you know, African Americans. And they do talk about sex and gender issues and perception of uh, celebrities and a lot of stuff. They, they cover a lot of current topics and they weren't afraid to get into the uh, non-popular stuff. They weren't afraid to attack Barack Obama and they're not afraid to attack our perception of women through, you know, uh, how Hollywood portrays them. and. They didn't hold any punches back. Okay, I guess that's why they try, you know, that's, that's, I guess for the movie existence, I guess they try to make it into like a real bubble shop uh, where real conversation takes place. <laughs> right, right. Since you've seen it, I guess they pres they uh, try to present both sides uh, on every topic. <laughs> yeah, I thought one thing that stuck out was, um, well, for me anyway, being, you know, kind of a nerdy kid growing up, uh, Ice Cube's character was commenting on his son. He's like, since when has going to school and working hard hard and studying and and doing things that that are good for the long term and for your future consider you know corny and cheesy that actually got cheers from the crowd because when you do that kind of things that kind of sets up your life for a better future uh, you get teased why is you know doing things that are like joining gangs and doing you know illegal stuff considered cool well that's part of the counter cultural counter parents counter whatever you know it's just like yeah. kids growing up and trying to figure out it's it's been that way for a long time you know since when we were in school right yeah <laughs> high school but you know i'm glad that in a movie like this where ice cube's family or they're actually trying to push their kid towards hey be a nerd don't go out and do drugs and get tattoos and that's not cool what's being cool is going to school getting good grades and getting a better life mm -hmm. right right yeah, the movie did, uh, I guess, about where we had, I mean, my predictions was a bit less than that, but it's kind of within the ballpark of where a, a what, 12, a sequel to a 12-year-old movie did, right? Right, right. It's not like one of his super comedies, like Ice Cube super comedies, where it pulled in, uh, you know, uh, 30, It's not why along. Plus. Yeah, right, it's right. not why along. Uh, he didn't have Kevin Hart <laughs> <laughs> to add in another 20 million. Right, right. But it'll be interesting to see how this does in the coming weeks because, you know, African American films targeting the African American uh, crowd tend to be very well front loaded. But the difference with this one is this one is also very well reviewed, you know, 92% on the tomato meter. I'm wondering if that will give it better legs in, in the upcoming weeks. Uh, I, look, 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 we're entering the summer months. We're well, beginning to enter where the big movie is released. And, you know, as we see this past weekend, you know, when you have a huge movie like The Jungle Book, it sucks up everything. Right. As we see with the drop-offs from the other movies, these huge, huge drop-offs. Yeah, know, yeah, It affects definitely. everything, right? Yeah, that's true. You know, we have, we have the new movies coming out that's potentially could do very well and then we have hey there's this tiny movie civil war <laughs> coming up uh, yeah so it, it doesn't look good for these niche movies i hear what you're saying i hear what you're saying but at the same time i feel like there are these movies that sucking up all the audiences and barbershop still did decent so i'm wondering if in the upcoming weeks uh, because it's you know it's not a big event movie it's not the jungle book it's not civil war it's not even, you know, like the Huntsman. So maybe this is a, it's a comedy. Maybe this is a good uh, counter programming. Maybe, know? but I think that people would want to tick off the bigger movies first. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll see. We'll s Look, the Jungle Book made over 100 million this past weekend. People, if they're on the fence about it, they're going to want to check it out. You say, hey, maybe it's good enough for my kids if I decided to say, uh, if I think that, uh, you know, it's scary for them. They say, oh, it's, it's fine. 
they went with one check it out that's why people boast about the number one movie being the number one movie it's like you know it's kind of like validation for them and you know to give other people who are on the fence jump over yeah that's true but I'm just saying, uh, I wonder how if Barbershop will hold up in the following weeks. Uh, if it'll buck the trend of front-loaded films that target the uh, African-American audience. I guess you don't think so. I'm, I'm saying no. because of the great reviews, it might. So we'll see. We'll see how... Okay, how... next week, next week. Come back next yeah. week. Okay, number three, moving along, is The Boss, the Melissa McCarthy comedy that is co-written, right? And directed by her husband. Mm-hmm. It dropped about what fifty six or fifty seven percent in the second weekend, pulled in uh, about ten million. Uh, yeah, um, this is a way bigger drop off for a Melissa McCarthy film in the uh, second weekend. Right, I'm gonna hold 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 on there, hold on there. Does the Jungle Book has an effect? Uh, yeah, yeah, the Jungle Book could possibly have a, a effect on that. That could be one thing. But just looking at it, um, just purely by the numbers, even Tammy, her worst review film held up pretty well but like you said uh, the reason here could be just be the jungle book sucking up all the audiences Um, it could be that her fans who would normally go to her films might be hey the jungle book's out i'm gonna take my kids to see that instead that could be it still nonetheless the film only cost 29 million they were already at 40 million and they'll probably end up making 60 or 70 million uh, total and still a profitable film for universal but it might be lo- one of the uh, lower grossing uh, Melissa McCarthy films. But she's probably in good hands because Ghostbusters is coming out. Yeah, yeah. But it has to be said, right? Yeah. Her collaboration with her husband, the stuff like Tammy and now The Boss. We have mm-hmm. two movies to go off on and they're not looking good. Yeah, they're kind of on the lower end of the uh, Melissa McCarthy spectrum of films in terms of both the box office and the critical acclaim or not critical non-acclaim <laughs> in the, right in right case. i mean if they insist on working together i think they should just hire another writer to write the scripts <laughs> yeah. i'm sure they believe they themselves working on the script can best highlight her talents <laughs> yeah, right. but that doesn't seem to be the case uh, yeah yeah well, I don't. I think as long as they have enough movies in between the movies they want to work together on, it'll be okay. I <laughs> uh, I guess so. I guess so. But you know, you can only stay uh, on the top for so long. Yeah. Right. Given enough of Tammy or the bosses. Hey, I mean, they're husband and wife, so you know. No, you I can't understand. Blame I them. understand. You can't blame them for uh, wanting to work together and spend some time together. You know, on a movie. It's just that most of the time these collaborations don't work out. But hey, as long as Melissa McCarthy uh, does enough movies in between these collaborations, she'll probably be fine. Okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like you, like you said, these are commercially and critically, these are in the lower end of, uh, of her films. Yeah, I mean, you don't want the joke to be, oh yeah, they're husband and wife working together and it's another... Yeah, Tammy, it's another, or it's another yeah. boss, and that's yeah. funnier than the movie themselves. Yeah, right. Okay, number four is Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice. A huge drop off, a 61%. It pulled in 9 million over the weekend, uh, and it crossed 300. It looks like it'll pass 900 million worldwide. Worldwide? Uh, I'm not sure. It, it already opened in um, most of the big territories. I mean, it already opened in China, it already opened in Japan. It already opened in uh, South Korea. It just needs another 70 million or so to cross 900. I think it's doable. Yeah, the good thing is it, um, well, actually, no. The problem is it, it already opened in most of the big territories, so it's already kind of on its third or fourth weekend. So it'll get to 900. I'm not quite sure if, if it'll get over it because, like, the U.S. is already dropping pretty quickly in the other territory too. I mean, you expect this movie is already what in in how many, in its fourth weekend? Yeah. Uh, in its fourth weekend for a big movie like that and it's only making nine million, it's not good. <laughs> yeah. But it made a lot of its money in the first couple of weeks. Yeah, the thing is it's following that trend overseas too. That's why uh, worldwide is at 830 million. So that's why I'm saying I don't think it'll pass 900 million. It might get to 900 million, but I'm not sure if you'll get past it because it's already dropping pretty quickly overseas too. Okay, that's something to keep an eye on. 
right. to see if it can cross uh, 900. I mean, I read um, somewhere that 800 million worldwide is the magic number where they, you know, make a break even. Okay, that's... Uh, for the movie. Some say more, but 800 right. is the consensus number. So it, it looks like it's doing okay. Okay, yeah. And it, it looks like it'll do, it'll do uh, good enough, but not great. Yeah, it's, it's set up the DC Cinematic Universe to showcase the other Justice League members. Uh, we have Suicide Squad next and then Wonder Woman, and we'll see how those will do. Okay, number five is Zootopia. It pulled in 8.2 million, and in this seventh week, uh, it's still doing great business. <laughs> Drop off is only 42%. It's not as high like in the 50s as the bigger movies, uh, you know, like Batman vs. Superman, yeah. or even The Boss, you know. Um, it's still doing quite well. Domestic take is 307 million, and the worldwide figure is 883. Right. Um, here's the thing with uh, Utopia. Um, I think we mentioned it last week, because in the previous weekends, it, it's been really leaky. It's been, you know, the drop-offs have, have been in the 20% range, which is really unheard of for a film that's been out for so long. And we were wondering, hey, the Jungle Book targets the same demographic, and how well it affected it. Obviously, did affect it. There's you know 43% drop off, but this 43% drop off is the smallest of all films in the top 10. So it's still holding up pretty well. Yeah, I think the Jungle Book probably caused a 10% drop off for every movie. If we take that yeah. into account, it's only about 32. Yeah, right. And I'm sure by next week, the drop off will get back down to the you know mid 20s, low 30s. Right, right. And you know what? I think Zootopia primed the uh, kids for the Jungle Book. Cute animals, and then, hey, scary animals. They're not so scary. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. True. All right, let's move on to number six. The uh, third wide release uh, debut over the weekend, uh, Criminal, starring Kevin Costner. Open to 5.8 million. It's, uh, I think, about where we expected. Right? No, it's about where you had it. I think you said five or six. I said I could do better, ten. Uh, so I was kind of off last weekend. Oh, right. They, you know, it has uh, Kevin Reynolds and, and Gal Gadot. They're fresh from their uh, superhero movies, and I guess that, did, that didn't help at all. Well, as we know, if Ryan Reynolds show his face, it's not going to do well. <laughs> yeah, that's <pretty> <laughs> <one>. <laughs> But yeah, I guess uh, people view viewed it as more of a Kevin Costner movie and thriller, and Kevin Costner isn't a, you know, as big of a star as he used to be. Yeah, he's not the dancers with wolf Kevin Costner. This is the yeah. um, criminal Kevin <laughs> Costner. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I mean, his last couple of films have opened in the eight to nine million range, which has been decent for someone like him right now in the advanced years of his career right now. And Criminal is kind of on the lower end of that range right now. Oh, yeah, well, considering that it also has Ryan Reynolds, it also has Gal Gadot, you know, who yeah. kind of killed it as Wonder Woman, you know, you thought it would do better, right? That's why I was betting on is that, hey, you know, these other name actors, people would want to come and see, but um, no. Right. And I could say maybe that, hey, they want to watch The Jungle Book, like parents or right. pulled. If you take into account that, hey, maybe a 10% drop off, that the numbers are higher, but who knows? Yeah, yeah, yeah. True. Let's move on to number seven. My big fat week wedding two made about three point three million over the weekend, a fifty percent drop off. The total domestically is at uh, fifty two million. Now it's a good, solid, modest hit. Uh, the worldwide figure is at seventy nine million. Yeah, I you know it's a great number considering how many years has passed since the first movie. And, uh, you know, I guess people will uh, return for more, and uh, it'll probably be a huge hit on Vito as well. Yeah, it could be, yeah. It's not going to match anywhere near what the first film did, but hey, this is a solid number after all those years. Yeah, exactly. The first movie was kind of like a one-hit wonder, right? Lightning in a bottle. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. really can't hope to replicate what happened there. And right. this one, worldwide, is already uh, like 70 million plus, which is pretty decent for a movie that you said cost around 18, 19 million to make. Right, yeah. All right, let's move on to uh, number eight, Miracles from Heaven, faith-based movie at uh, 1.9 million experience, a 60% drop-off, which uh, is a pretty steep drop-off from the previous weekends. The previous weekends, it, it was holding up really well, like around 30% drop-off. Nonetheless, the film has already made 57 million at a budget of just 13 million, so it's kind of a hit in the same wing of uh, My Big Fat Week Wedding 2. And this one has Jennifer Gardner, Queen Latifah. With legitimate stars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> These films have made enough money that, you know, legitimate A-listers or B-listers or, you know, actually 
uh, making these films now. It's not just a bunch of no namers. Right, they're paying them enough. <laughs> yeah, like the next film on the list, number nine, God's Not There Too. Oh, you mean Melissa Joan Hart is not an A-lister? Ah, uh, yeah, no. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. Uh, it made 1.7 million over the weekend, uh, about 60% drop off, and it has made 17 million uh, after three weeks. It's kind of a disappointment, especially when you compare it to the first film, which made about what 60 million yep. total. Mm-hmm. So, a huge disappointment, I think. Uh, you know, these movies are cheap to make and I think they're okay-ish. You're right, they're cheap to make and they probably didn't lose much money on it. Just looking at it, it's, I think they're pretty disappointed. Okay. I mean, it didn't even make half as much and it's not going to make half as much as the first one. Alright, I mean, this one doesn't have Kevin Sorbo getting run over, so there's that. Uh, <laughs> right? That's that, right. <laughs> you need Kevin Sorbo to come back from the dead and get run over again. <laughs> okay. I guess that's the secret to the first film success. A- exactly. They should rename the sequel Kevin Sorbo is not dead three or something like that. You know. Why? Right, right. Or Kevin Sorbo gets won over again. Yeah, that joke kind of fell flat. Yeah. Okay. Right. <laughs> that means it's time to move on to number ten, uh, Eye in the Sky, drama starring Helen Mirren and the late Alan Rickman. Um, it pulled in 1.6 million, experienced a 43% drop off, which is okay ish. Uh, yeah. And so far, in six weeks, it pulled in uh, 13 million. Uh, that, that's actually a pretty good hole, considering it's like the second best hole of all the films in the top 10, only behind Zootopia. Almost every other film has fallen off in the 50 to 60% range. So it's still holding up. Overall, it looks like it'll probably get to, I don't know, 15, 16, or even 17 million total. Kind of on the lower end of Helen Mirren movies. But still, as an indie film, that's that's a pretty solid number. It is, but this one also has Helen Mirren in a, uh, you know, as one of the uh, military personnel, I guess. So it's kind of maybe outside of what she usually plays in her, you know, other movies. So, mm. all right. And of note, it's number 11, Hardcore Henry. Um, in its second weekend, it experienced a, as you said, 71% drop off, put in 1.4 million. So it's not the hit that, uh, you know, STX hoped it to be. They outbid other, uh, I think other studios were interested in it. And I think they outbid the, those studios for Hardcore Henry after a screening at, I think, Sundance. Yeah, one of those interesting experiments that uh, didn't quite hit it at the box office. Right, right. All right, let's move on to the opening movie instead of movies. Uh, we only have one, The Huntsman Winter's War, which is actually a prequel to Snow White and the Huntsman. And this one stars Chris Hemsworth as the Huntsman. Joining him is Emily Blunt, Jessica Chastain, and Charlize Theron return to play her, uh, you know, that evil queen. And of course, this is all probably precipitated by um, what went on behind the scenes between uh, the director and the star of the uh, previous film yeah christian stewart and um rupert sanders basically the tabloids caught uh you know has photographed evidence of christian stewart and rupert sanders getting cozy with each other yeah cheating on their respective significant others yeah sanders was a married man and um stewart was dating her co-star in yeah yeah, robert patterson her co-star in the twilight series and um you know at that time they punished stewart instead of sanders so and she she was written out of the movie pretty much uh they were planning on a snow white and a huntsman sequel but given the scandal i guess uh they chose to do a prequel that's focused on chris hemsworth and hence this movie uh even though the director is not here no no he moved on to something else i mean uh you know at that time i read that they were trying to keep him on but given the heat he chose to direct something else the first movie grows domestically 155 million, 396 million worldwide. I mean, obviously they wanted to make a sequel. This is just a, a brand that can they can build upon. And the trailer looks like it's more of the same. I think even better. I think the first movie wasn't that exciting. It's a take on Snow White and the you know Seven Dwarfs t- Tale, right? They add an action element yeah. to it, and this one right. is even more action packed, you know, than that. And you know, Emily Blunt is good in the uh, action genre too, and so is Jessica Chastain. But the only thing is, this feels like I mean, sure, it's a prequel, but without Kristen Stewart, it feels like leftovers. 
from the first film. Uh, it is, but hey, you know, if you can replace Christian Stewart with Emily Bunt and Jessica Chastain and a returning Charlize Theron, I think you're pretty good there. Uh, you know, and they they ratchet up the uh, the action element. Chris Hemsworth, outside of his Thor movies. <laughs> uh, hasn't been very really good. Uh, ex- exactly. So that's the unknown here. <laughs> Kristen Stewart, because of the Twilight films, at least has her um, you know loyal fan base. But I- I'm sure after what has happened, her loyal fan base will probably not as loyal. Well, here's the thing, though. I mean, her movies outside of the Twilight series, and besides um, Snow White, there's a lot of qualifiers there. You know, you know, or or kind of low key. Yeah, it seems like she chose the I'll do one big movie and one small movie. Right, right. But what I'm saying is not a given that she has an audience or fans outside of the Twilight movies. That's what I'm saying. Right, right. Yeah. Because, you know, the sampling is very really small. Mm-hmm. So what, what do you have this as? I'm not very really optimistic. Okay, let's see. The first movie opened to 56 million, right? Um, and... That is with the you know the Twilight the Halo effect from the Twilight movies that uh, you know with Christian yeah. Stewart. I you know e- even that I think it's uh, and then you have the Jungle Book. I think the the second week for yeah. the Jungle Books is going to perform well. I mean I I don't yeah see because it, because it's so so well off. reviewed. Yeah yeah I don't see a huge yeah. drop off. I think maybe forty. I'm going below that. I think this just looks like eating leftovers. Okay and okay. I'm gonna go with the Chris Hemsworth non Thor. <laughs> I'm I'm thinking fifteen. Fifth, okay, fifteen. All right, I'm I'm shocked. Fifteen to but... twenty. I'll give you a range. Fifteen to twenty. Okay, I'm shocked. I'm shocked, but uh, okay, who knows? Fifteen to twenty, but I'm I'm gonna stick closer to fifteen. Okay, I I'm, I'm betting on Emily Blunt, Jessica Chastain, and Charlize Theron to lift the Chris Hemsworth curse. All right. To be able to break out, and this is his non Thor movie that's gonna be able to do well because hey, you know you we'll have... see if three we'll see if three um, good looking high quality quality actresses can bring Chris Hemsworth out of his curse. Yes, yes, yes. If they can't do it, then hey, there's no hope for him. There's no hope outside <laughs> Thor. I mean, other yeah. Than, yeah, outside Thor. He might have to go with the indie route. <laughs> I think he's okay as Thor. I mean, you know, but just, yeah, he's good as Thor. It's just, uh, don't give him anything outside of that. <laughs> so we'll see. All right, so it's going to be a relatively calm week with only one major movie that's being released, Huntsman. The next week is going to be calm as well, right? Or no? Yeah, it's going to be calm until Civil War. Yeah, so it's going to be calm. I think the Huntsman's going to do well. I'm really pessimistic about uh, the Huntsman. You're more optimistic than I am. Because I like it. I like it. I like the movie. I like the look of the movie. I like the action, even though it doesn't have the familiar story of you know Snow White. Um, I think it's good enough. And hey, you know, you have Emily Blunt, you have Jessica Chastain. They can lift almost any movie. Okay, so XSX has it at uh, 29 million. You have it at uh, 40. 40. You're on the upper end. I have it at 15 to 20. I'm probably way off, but we'll see. Okay, okay, we'll see next week how The Huntsman will do and how The Jungle Book will do. Uh, those are the two movies to keep an eye on. Oh, I forgot to mention that uh, The Huntsman at 55 <laughs> reviews on One Tomatoes is is at 16%. I think the first film was mixed, like around the 50% range. So this is uh, this is pretty bad. Oh, uh, yeah. So I could be way off. Yeah. HSX could be way off. Yes, and you could be way off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I could be way off, yeah. So, right, we'll see. That's the drama. That's the thing that we yeah. have, have to look forward to next week. All right, see you guys next week.